He doesn't have great attacks. I don't want to lose the Pilgrim because it's very nice damage. And potentially I can draw two cards on the next turn with Sleeper and that's, that's a big deal. Hello everyone, it's Love here, and today we are playing Ors of Life game that doesn't fear any tier 1 aggro decks, because we are resistant to it, and we have a low-key broken card with Extraction Specialist that is literally two cards in one, and our two drops, oh boy they matter, even Sleeper is a great hit because it doesn't need to attack, it still brings so much value, and yeah, why talk about it when you can see it in action, so have fun and enjoy. Uh, is that a Tally Ramp deck? It seems to be like the only Ragdus version that is played, except Anvil, right? Anvil is the second one. Against Anvil it could be very interesting, so let's see it. What are you? Uh, search basically untapped, alright, sure. I mean we attack. And in response he sacrifices a land. Alright, I didn't expect this counterplay. Alright. Uh, first we develop the board, right? Uh, unless you expect a sweeper, but unless it's Brotherhood's end. It seems like Brotherhood's end if he said, yeah. If he said nice, it means that he had a good card. Alright, uh, we still are kind of okay, honestly. Our opponent is playing Marduk control, it seems. Yep. Is that a tally? Tox real. Alright. So it's, it's, it's basically a tally run, but they switch the 7 drop to a different one. As the rest of the deck kind of stays the same. Toxry. Toxry is decent at killing our creatures, which can be a problem. What's wrong with you, bro? So, uh, do we play Shaw? I guess they want to reanimate the Toxry, right? And it will take a while before it melts through Shaw all that. So let's play it and see what happens. We'll try to keep the board a bit wide. Is this some weird upkeep stuff? Oh right, sure that they have a removal probably. Or a way to draw it, maybe. They definitely play big score, right? Yeah, they already used it. Yeah, you do your thing. You make your toxic. All right. Okay, so their whole deck is about cycling cards and trying to reanimate big slug. All right. And when they do, we kill it. That seems like a decent choice. Do I want to draw cards? I don't really. But I do want to be somewhat aggressive, so let's go for the damage. Yep. And we use it for Toxer, of course, because that's the that's the main threat right now. You know, cards are still useful. And next attack will be better. Alright, down to 9. Nice, isn't it? <laughs> oh man. Sure, so they will play a tap plant. And I would expect them to reanimate, like they have so much time, they really should do it by now. Sure. You may exile 5 cards from when you do return target creature cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. Do they have 5? Oh, cards, not creatures. Alright, that's fine. We still kill Toxel anyway. Most likely? You know what? We'll see. Because it actually doesn't kill anything right now. Alright, let's read the wording correctly. At the beginning of each end step, slime counter. So there will be 1 ones. We can still go through it, kinda. We lose Shelly, we gain 4 damage, we'll see. We need to remove our... The lifelinker is probably the biggest problem. Yeah, I still think we go for this. We, we should wait until the end step, but it's fine. It's still the end step, alright. Alright, guys. We need to work for it right now. Charlotte needs to survive for a very long time, unfortunately. With Phantom Effect, our creatures kinda survive longer, so it's pretty good. They probably have the same play again, I would guess, or something like this. I think we might go for Akrazot, though. 
If I attack with everything, I can take Numa, but it will be too slow. And he's emoting like crazy, I bet. But I still think we play Takenuma. And probably Aklas, but honestly. Let's go. I think we go like this. He can trade against Death Touch. Alright, he's actually taking all of this damage. That's a lot of damage, man. So I can go Aether super wide and try to force the kill on the next turn. Uh, he definitely plays Sweeper, so Path of Pearl is possibly on the table. I think we go with this. This is a little bit more resistant. If he plays, uh, he definitely should play Sunforce, right? So Sunfall will be good for him. We don't have uh, the Restless Fortress, or whatever it's called, so that's a little bit of a problem. Down to one, potentially. Alright, draw those cards. So he won't be able to, you know, slug the shorted in time. Yep, he can protect legendaries. I mean, he's dying on the next card. Is that enough to kill us? Probably, I would guess. So this is 12. Probably enough damage, right? Best we can do is probably this. We don't have first strike. So this is what? 8 plus 12, 20 damage. The problem is the lifelink, that's the big problem. I'm losing the Aklazot. Can I... can I do it? No. If I go like this, alright? If I go like this, this is 14, plus 4, 18, 30 damage. This is exactly really far, right? So I kind of have to go for this play, unfortunately. I don't have a choice here. Like, otherwise I die. The lifelink is the problem. The lifelink is a huge problem, because he recovered and now he can keep drawing more cards. Hmm. Alright, let's attack first and see if he blocks. I would guess he will. Right. So, I can get back the Akrazot if I want. Or we can go super wide. It seems a little bit better overall. Let's go for it. Let's go for it. Alright, I expected he has something. Alright. I mean, he will get the slugs, alright? But it will be un until his end of turn. Yeah, I think the lifelink from, uh, you know, the guy really said, like, he would be dead at this point. But he life gains 6, and we couldn't prevent it, even if we blocked it or killed it. So he had very low fuel, but he had exactly enough fuel to avoid Leaper. And when Shorter dies, I think that's kinda it, right? So he won't get that damage because Shorter dies right now. So how do we do it, man? How do we do it? Maybe we go like this. He doesn't have lifelink right now. Let's go like this. We have one card in the hand, so... It might, maybe, who knows, matter. I think we just attack, man. This way, if he blocks... Like, it's, it's kind of the same as losing two end step, but at least... I think it's a little bit, maybe, better in some ways. Down to three. It's not blue, but they can use treasures to draw cards. Alright, they are drawing cards, that's interesting. I guess they are feeling the pressure. Mm -hmm, sure. Alright, playing in our... <laughs> 
combat phase, sure. I mean, you either do it at the main phase or later. Uh, so, I mean, I can drain him very nicely. You know what? Let's try it. Let's try it. This will be a 3-3. Tree -tree. And that's enough to survive until our next turn. We have draws that will win this game, but we'll see. Alright. Alright, for example, drawing uh, Sadistic Pilgrim again will win the game, right? Because we can attack. Oh, but they can... No, no, no. It will be a 2-1, so when we attack... Alright. Interesting choice. Definitely better than playing a sweeper though, so that makes sense. Hmm. Alright, do we want to give him the pink? That's the question. They cannot kill the pilgrim. They will. So we cannot block the devils. Because then uh, at dance step it will be a 1-1, one -one. so if they deal damage right now, it's, you know, it's still the same. So then they deny the lifeling, they feel proud about themselves, but it doesn't really make a difference. We just need to draw something that kills them, and I think that's the play. Oh! Huh? Nice? That's weird that they scooped to this. Like, I drew the card that wins the game, so I would play Shorted and they would die at the, at the upkeep. I can only attack with one, so they're at one. And they can block with this. Oh, but then it dies, right. I will go with uh, Pilgrim. I think we want to, you know, go into a bit race direction. It also has Death Touch, so it should trade very nicely. Alright. Thank you. Man, they, they just take those trades. Thank you. <laughs> oh, yes. My value. Just got provided. Uh, I think the problem is that we really won the wedding announcement, so that was a little bit greedy play, but man, it, it felt so good, I just had to do it. Was this the best decision? Honestly, probably wedding announcement was better, but it was still epic. But because you can just play specialist turn later, right? And then follow up with a sleeper on, on curve. But our opponent doesn't really have much pressure here. Uh, you attack first before playing land. This doesn't... this. Kinda confuses your opponent how much potential you have. He doesn't know if you didn't draw the land. For example, if I play a land, I can play Shorded on, the, on this turn. If I have three, I cannot play Shorded, and maybe I got mana screwed. Your opponent doesn't really know. You add this whole layer of... Your opponent isn't sure if you are playing like this, or this is the your draw, basically. And it seems that I think our opponent possibly rage quit after he realized that he played exactly into our strategy. But, okay, okay, that, that was an honest mistake, my bad. He's just here, he probably didn't see it, it's fine. So, wedding announcement, and a tap land. This is a good land because it can attack on the next turn as well. We didn't attack with two creatures, and every time he kills something, he will lose life, which slowly will hurt him. Alright, we're getting into an interesting part of the game. Uh, as you can see, we have way more cards in the board than our opponent and way less in the in the hand. Alright. I see how it is. I see how it is. So, I honestly think we will go with the bat right now. When we attack, he won't block most likely. And I want more board pressure. I hope he has one good target, because if he has two, we might be in some trouble. So let's start here and see what we, what happens. The life gain is nice, but we mostly ha want the, the drain. Alright. So he has six mana, which means Hatcher and the Chomp. But he really wants to play the Karnazar mostly. And he won't be able to, so that's the only hit we can go for right now. We can use this, we can pump it. You know, the life gain is nice, but... And this is this is the time when we didn't flip the announcement because I was greedy on the specialist. Right now, on next attack, we would already have the anthem effect. So we will see if it matters. They will definitely chomp the, the butt. Alright, here, here comes the big dinosaur. 
they're at 14. Uh, if he will be aggressive, I'm absolutely fine with it. I actually want him to be aggressive. They they will definitely jump, right? At sorcery speed. Huh. Really? Okay. I honestly didn't expect this one. N that, that was probably the worst choice of everything, man. <laughs> right? Am I crazy or that was literally the worst choice? It enabled our pilgrim. Alright, I'll take it, man. I absolutely. Maybe I'm wrong, but it, it feels weird. Alright, so. We definitely need to drain him as much as possible. To mana. And we probably pay the ward, right? Is, is this still better? Like, with this, it will always get the value, right? So we want to kill it. So we have two mana, basically. We have enough for a death touch. And with 30 life, I don't think you can raise us. We will absolutely do it. And I mean, we can double trade, but he will just sacrifice. So this goes on a Sadistic Pilgrim, right? We could also attack once and go for the next turn. I kinda like it more, man. I kinda like it more. It doesn't have great attacks. I don't want to lose the Pilgrim because it's very nice damage. And potentially I can draw two cards on the next turn with Sleeper and that's that's a big deal. So you can see, we on this turn we didn't have this kind of push yet. Because I played Wedding Announcement a little bit later. So we can see how much of a difference it makes. Because he's at 12 and this huge attack can matter. But honestly I think it could be even better on this turn. So we will see how it goes. It could be even better overall. Alright. They can pay... F they can deal 5, right? Target Dinosaur, yeah. Unfortunately, uh, they will go with Sleeper, I think. Yep. That's the correct decision. Listen, I don't have cards. I can still do it. It doesn't change anything, but it's cool. Alright. One damage acquired. So he will have some dinosaurs, but he cannot really be aggressive easily. Listen. He cannot be aggressive easily. <laughs> because we are trading our tokens for his cards, basically. Yeah, it's still a token, but it's 3-3 and we lose 2-2. Two, two, two. And we also get some good deal on the, you know, racing part. It also means he has less defenders. Like, Sadistic Pilgrim did work this, this game, man. <laughs> I can attack with Fortress or go with a Sleeper. I think we should be winning this. So I attack with everything. I think so. They don't have life gain. And we go with Sleeper after the combat phase. Like, this is pretty hard answer uh, we are in the draining part of the game we just attack with everything and even though pilgrim should die all right yep that's the right one all right i mean good job you <laughs> good game uh, all right i i guess they knew about it but in this case they should block differently right uh, uh, maybe they didn't have blocks but one way or the other they were dead anyway all right, we are going first, and we have some decent plays. Not the best ones, but, you know, some decent plays. Our only black mana is on the top line, so let's play it. You know, a little bit awkward, but hopefully we can trade into something. Let's play Takenuma, actually. Even though this is pretty decent for later, we might want to use it. Here's the burn. Cut down or play with fire? Cut down, sure no reason to you know tap the mana but this is the point of the deck now we have extraction specialist and we get a free value basically here you go here you go and he's here with another removal and the sleeper is amazing target for reanimation because even if it cannot attack it still gives so much value <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's crazy because so many games i play with this deck it's just my opponent removing creature every single turn forever and having like 18 sweepers in the hand. It, it's funny because it's it's how it works right now, you know. <laughs> Alright, I attack your face. You want to remove the, the thing? Oh, you want it. Uh, of course they are waiting. Oh, they are actually going for it right now. 
uh, a cut down. All right. If you want to invest extra card into removing it, I think they will still kill it, but I'll take extra card. So I'm paying three mana to discard one card, which is usually a normal ratio. And I kinda, man, I expected that he's baiting this play. It seems that he didn't have a removal. All right, sure, I'll take it. So only four cards. We also have four cards, but our cards are really strong, man. All right, I smirk, yeah. Like we are, we are very high value deck in a way. Like a lot of our cards are two for two for one at least. All right, big score, big score. All right, so this suggests that he's uh, like you know, air uh, not air type but Italian reanimator. Not really reanimator. He ramps, right? So ramp deck. I know that the names are so hard. So let's see if he has the thing. A Chandra, sure. I wonder. I think he will kill the sleeper, right? Unless he goes for plus. This can be very interesting. So far he only played removal and the big score. Four. Oh, he's learning. However, he's not learning different plays. And we are fine with it. By the way, we could just use the fortress, but why pay the mana when we can get the value for free? And that's we play, why we play the Emperor. We go to combat. As you can see, our value is pretty decent. Bro, please, please stop it. So, um, he didn't have a sweeper, but he didn't need one so far. So what happens if he plays a sweeper? I mean, it's kind of fine. I still have sure that I'm going all in here because I think he has no sweeper. And even if he does, I think I'm fine. Like I can get back up as it. All right. Do you want to reanimate my extraction specialist? All right, they are going for the card, but do they have time for it, man? I honestly don't think they, they have. So this is what, eight? Let's make it easier. We are going for Akrazot because they probably don't have a removal for two. It could be go for the Prot, I guess. So 9, 10 damage. 11. So we just need to pay this single point of mana. There's no reaction, man. Like, I'm just killing this guy. And this is what you get for paying 3 life for cruelty of Geeks. And he's also this guy. He can show us what he drew. <laughs> he doesn't want to. Alright, even after Chandra, man, we absolutely destroyed him. Alright, opponent goes first. Let's sit. Let's sit. The bats need to do the work. Uh, I mean, we kind of have okay start, so let's put up as much pressure as we can because, oh boy, we are getting Sunfords soon. Pass. As expected. Hunt for the day. Smirky smirk. Ah, you want... You know you want to remove it. So, what do we do? I think we go uh, for the Pilgrim. Because it provides the most pressure if they ignore it. They ignore it. Oh, so this is this kind of deck. All right, I expected a uh, band control. Man, crazy me! Like nobody plays band control. All right, so this will be this will be interesting. We have we have pretty strong attack on this turn. Do we want to go double bat? Uh, absolute dead card. Worst draw of the deck, literally. They're yeah, literally the only card that won't do any difference this whole game. So, uh, what do we go for? We can go fortress and then double bat. We waste one damage, but honestly, I think it's worth it. It's honestly worth it. Because we have a very narrow window of trying to kill our opponent. And it's closing on us. It's closing. I need to get rid of all of his Sunfalls. And right now, the board is not so scary that... Uh, yeah, I think he sets up for the Sunfall on the next turn. Because he knows he has time. And we need to punish it. He will probably get rid of one of the bats. Uh, sure. It's not enough pressure to make him react, to be honest. But I hope he will. Thank you, man. 
thank you. That's so, so useful. Alright. And now we try to demolish his hand and hope that he isn't good enough to top deck a sweeper or remover. Because if he's not, he will be out of this game. Here it is. Listen. Listen, you can play your lands. And he's in full top deck mode. And now the game will be decided by drawing cards from the top. Let's see uh, the sunfall. Let's see the sunfall. Alright, we are going first. And this should be pretty nice. How do we play it? I honestly think we go with Fortress. We kind of miss a little bit of tempo. Um, uh, hello. <laughs> And our opponent is just here, playing his cards from the hand like a champion. Alright, let's see. That's it. So next turn it's Monstrous Rage into Godric into Godric. So if he goes Squee, we can cut it down. If we go go so this definitely has to be Monstrous Rage. Right now they don't have a way to get it back. If they attack with Cheek, like they have to attack with Cheek, but then we can just raise him. Just don't draw two drop. Of course he drew. Man, he instantly drew a two drop. How man, how can I play the game when every time I discard their piece, they always just top deck the, the same one? Oh my god, it's still fine because I have the specialist, but oh boy, it's annoying. Oh boy, it's annoying. Extraction specialist lines very nicely against what they have. Bro. No monsters right. No cheating in combat. Alright, when you fight, you fight honorably like not a monorail that's interest really you decided this is your best shot right 18 18 i didn't see a difference there all right so we have one black mana all right <laughs> interesting one so he will play god i think we just raise them honestly the mana is really awkward right now but what can you do, man? What can you do? Uh, they will expect this Godric will get celebration from Squee token. I mean, that's kind of the whole decision, right? So let's go for Squee. No Squee for you. And the problem is that we gained three, two mana on this exchange, but the problem is that we wasted three because we have bad, bad colors right now uh, in the end. Missionary is nice. But I, I still think we go like this. So they will start to overpower them because we have mana issues right now. And this will take absolute forever. Yeah, I honestly think we don't have a choice. Uh, if we just have their own colors, it's, it is what it is, you know? We are going with this play. At least Missionary is all white. Alright, they cannot play another Gothic, so the game will be decided on what the three cards are that they draw. A Chick Army. Cool. Full swing, right? That's what you do. Full swing, and until one of the players explode, then go another. What a life of Magic player. <laughs> what a life. Alright, down to 12. Can our live game tank this much damage? We'll see, we'll see. I honestly think it has a it has a chance. With specialists we can live link quite a lot, man. And you know that our opponent will never play a different card than just smirking your face and seeing if that's enough. I mean it got him to Mythic, right? Alright. Just drawing those lightning strikes from the top like a champion and then conceding game anyway. So man. Like, if not the first lightning strike, imagine how much easier it would be. And they still lost after drawing two of them from the top. I mean, that, we are doing something right. Alright, I hope you enjoyed those games. And I hope that we proved that Specialist is a pretty strong card, man. Three mana for a 3-2 lifelink is very decent rate. 
The fact that you get a free creature, and especially that when played on curve, you potentially get two turns in one turn. This card can be absolutely insane. And one of the powers of this is that it's one card that kind of forces very often a sweeper uh, with sleeper and, you know, sadistic pilgrim, but especially I think the bat is insane because not only it gives you pressure on the board, but it also gives you basically the full effect from the card. Of course, the card cannot attack, right? But if you if you play the deck right, you will get the value sooner or later. And yeah, with Shorted, I honestly think we could be playing four Shorted because they were so insane in every matchup. I tried to go with the Emperor and you, can, you have seen that it works against Chandra, Planeswalkers. And the idea was that you have creatures, so nearly always you can get this plus one for a first strike and you just get a free value most of the time. It also gives you a little bit more edge you know, with removal against things like Shorted because you kind of have to remove them. So so yeah, I honestly uh, think the deck is pretty solid. It does a little bit of everything. It's very resistant to aggro. With, you have seen that when they attack with Squee into the specialist, it's like, I don't even care. So the lifelink, especially like you can play missionary, you can chum block, negate full damage, get a good trade or, you know, even a chumpy and then play section specialist and get it all over again. And you have even better lifelinker right now. When you can race mono at aggro, you know that the deck has some power. And honestly, I think we won't spend too much time. You know the deck, it's pretty straightforward, but still very, very powerful. And the biggest power of the deck is definitely the specialist. Wedding announcement also means that even small creatures will start to make, uh, you know, a lot of difference during the late game. So we have ways to just make sure that every creature is a, is a threat, basically. And yeah, I think we will stop there. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Tell me what you think in the comments. And yeah, see you tomorrow.